Welcome back to Amber Gakers. This is going to be the uh, Pob new Pablo stand part two, basically. I finally got around to doing the windows. So let's take a look here and I'll show you how I made these. I didn't really film any of the making because it's it's pretty pretty basic, pretty simple, okay? So basically, what I did is I created the frame, okay? So I went out and I took my dimensions, and my dimensions were 29 by 15. So I cut, just cut some 3 quarter inch by, um, I think these are 2 and a half. And the reason I went with 2 and a half is because that's all my saw can do to rip, rip vertically to get these down perfectly to 3 quarter inch so I could build this halfway, make this halfway square and everything. So I think the boards were at uh, probably one inch or something like that. And then I just kind of, I kind of ripped them down the faces. So that's why I had to cut these to two and a half instead of doing three and a half or whatever. So none of that really matters as long as your outside dimensions are correct. Okay. And it covers your opening. So basically all I did was I put a screw in the end here. Okay. And I drove that through a big long screw and that's how I held this all together. And then this here is just an inch and a half by an inch and a half cut out of an old 2x4 or a, actually it was a strip that I cut off of those, uh, those uh, uh, ceiling joists that I used for the garage doors. This was the leftover piece. So I just cut, ripped it down so it was inch and a half by inch and a half. And this could be, this is way overkill. This could be, you know, this could be three quarter inch lumber also if you wanted to. But I had these laying around so that's why I used them, okay? And I took it on the saw and I cut a basically a little bit over a quarter inch uh, notch in the corner. And that's what makes this, gives it room for this plastic to slide. Okay. So now as far as these, these bolts I got here go, on my other one I have knobs. Okay. And the knobs with a screw to tighten up the window so it can't blow with the wind. And I, I don't know where my knobs are. I know I have some here yet somewhere. I thought they were in these these uh, these uh, totes right here, but they're not in there. I can't find them, so they're probably in a, a bigger tote on a shelf somewhere that I don't know where I put them, okay? So basically, we have the storage cleaned out, but I still haven't gone through everything and put it, you know, in my toolboxes and where, where I really want it so I know where it is for the next time. So that, that'll be later on. Um, but anyhow, I just put these bolts in here for now so that I can operate the window. So I put a little, a little hole right here and that's, that's where that screw screws into and then that holds the window in place and holds them tight together, okay? So that the wind can't blow through. So they just slide open like that, okay? And they're relatively quiet. So this is going to work two ways, right? We, we discussed this in the other video. That this is going to flip up or down. I'm not. I think the one in the front, where I usually have my bow sitting pointing out the front, is going to flip down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it flip down, and then this will be this will be my table that I set the bow on. Okay. That's that's my plan right now. So I got to go get a couple hinges. This is still sticky. It's wet. It, it's uh, I painted it yesterday, but it's been kind of damp out, so it's it's not drying real well. So it'll take another day or two to dry, and then we'll go we'll go hang these up inside the blind, and we'll we'll show you what we did with the rest of the blind. I got the roof on, and I'll show you how I did that. That was very simple, and we still have trim to put on out there. Okay, so we're gonna get that trim. Paint it up and the roof 
the roof is done and we, we'll just we got to get the inside painted black yet so I gotta go get some paint I gotta go get some other stuff and then we'll get this we'll get this finished up some hinges and we'll get this all finished up okay so stick around all right guys I hope you can see this okay in here so first thing I gotta do is I gotta spray this here get this black so that before I hang the window on there I just wanted to show you the window is going to go over that opening just like that there and then I can either make it flip down like that or like in my other stand I have them going up okay so either one I can do it either way so what I'm thinking is because this is the food plot out here That's my main my main window out this way you know I think that one for sure is gonna flip down okay these other ones I'm, I'm still I'm still on the fence about I might I might because I'm already I, I'm just a couple days of I'm what am I a week right now I'm a week away from bow opening a bow season I may just screw these in here on the sides and the back and just make this first one a hinge and then I'll worry about it next spring or whenever whenever I get around to it even during the winter I can work on it some more and try and make these also hinge so I only have one set of hinges so I'm thinking I'm gonna just make that one the hinge window and just screw these in tight but the first thing I gotta do is I gotta get some of this sprayed with black so I'm gonna just spray around this opening here so I can then I can do the rest some other time um, I'm actually thinking about you know putting some caulking here maybe to seal this up so that that can't if that does open up a little bit you know the the caulking will uh will seal it up i can see i already got some earwigs crawling around in here i don't know if you guys know what an earwig is right there okay they're an ugly bug they like wet wood so as long as it's wet they'll be there you know so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this sprayed quick, get these windows hung up, and then figure out how I'm going to hinge this one here for sure uh, to make a table for the bow to sit on. And then the other thing is up on top, and I don't know, I don't know how well you're going to see that. Right up there I got some gaps where the roof went on. So that's got to get filled in. And I'm thinking I might just squirt it full of caulking or something. I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, I don't like that foam stuff, but we'll see. We'll see what I come up with. Um, I probably do that from the outside when I put that trim piece on out there. And that would seal up that, that opening there. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you was this is how I did the roof. I put uh, some 2x4s across this way and I bolted them in to that my uh, wall that I built uh, three of them to be exact and then I put some cross pieces in there and then I just screwed the uh, the metal on the outside so that's all it needs to be this should work pretty good this will this will be a nice nice little stand out here with that opening in the door I got to get this tree branch cut but I got an open shot clear clear view all the way down into that food plot down there okay so it's gonna be it's gonna be the gamble shot if something nice comes through otherwise I won't waste a shot on a doe down there bet you that's 30 some yards if a nice buck comes stands by that by that licking stick that that may be a shot I would take okay so all right let me get this sprayed quick and then I'll show you what it looks like once I get one of these windows hung up all right so this is all I'm doing for right now I'm just spraying that black and then I will come back later and do the rest of this in here. Um, I'll look for some cheap stain or something because I like the way the stain goes on. It really soaks into the wood. This spray paint is just a quick, is a, just a quick patch to get get this going and get these windows on here. And the rest of it, I think, uh, you know, a brush, a brush and some stain and slop it on really heavy, and that's the best way to do it. But like I say, stain and paint is really expensive right now, so. I don't know, I'll just wait wait and see what, what happens here in a little bit. 
um, see if anything changes. So the main the main thing you want is at least from the windows up, where, where the deer are down there in the ground looking up in here, you want this black. You want this toned down so that they don't see anything light. Because if they see light, that that's a reaction for them. They, they go and they just, you know, something something's there that's not supposed to be there. They know that. They know that light isn't supposed to be up there in the tree or whatever. And I, I have experienced this, so I know this to be true. Even sometimes the windows themselves, if they're if they're coming from behind you over here and they look up and they see through this other window, because you have that window open, that, that can be a red flag for them too. I've had that happen. Because um, they see something that, that wasn't there yesterday. It was black yesterday and now all of a sudden they see this light through there, you know, and, and it can happen. So you want this all black in here. And uh, we'll get we'll get that done. We'll do stain or something, but for right now my main goal is the windows finish the trim, get some of these holes plugged up up here, and that, that's I'll get that done. Right now the deer patterns look like me sitting in the other stand is a better place to sit right now for what I've been seeing on on the game cameras, but that can change. So you know I I, I want to get this done so that. At least I can sit out here and put a heater in here and stuff once the weather gets cold. All right, so let's get this window hung up and uh, we should be good to go after that. So I got this one flipping down, so I, I have to make something to hold it there. Um, not sure yet, I'll come up with something. So you can either leave it closed. I have to make some kind of a knob here to, to flip it open. And then, uh, so you either leave it closed or you slide the glass or you flip it down for a little bit bigger window. It ain't much bigger, but it's it's a little bigger. And, and it also makes the table for your, for your shooting table. So, so there you go. I just put some screws in there temporarily to hold it up. So a couple things. This window right here, I just screwed it in, put it in there tight. I very rarely would get a shot that way, but you never know. So the, that one will probably stay closed most of the time. The wind comes out of the west, which is the other side here. So I screwed up. So I started looking at this door window and uh, the window I made for it. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't catch that earlier, but it, it ain't gonna fit. So I gotta go back to the drawing board. Basically what I gotta do is I gotta cut these two styles down, move this one in, cut these boards off a little bit. Um, glass, yeah. It's not going to slide open the way I had it, so maybe I'll make it. Maybe I'll make the glass come down from the top or something like that. Um, so that's back to the drawing board for that one there. But the rest of them are done. We'll get the rest of this painted up. I'll get that trim painted and get that trim on. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right. So we'll catch you in a little while. You see, you can't train a wild bird, huh? So while we were, we were camping over uh, Labor Day weekend and there were all these cran apple, uh, cranberry, whatever they are, some kind of cran apple trees. So I picked a bunch of the berries and I brought them back. And he, he's just sitting here waiting for me to put them in his dish. Eat your berries. Go eat, eat, eat. Here, eat. Yeah. Yeah. Let me pull them off of there for you. They're easier if I take them off of there. They're hard to get off of there, aren't they? 
There you go. So there were uh, dogwood berries, which were white, and they were these uh, these uh, cran apple berries or whatever they're called. And uh, he likes the white ones. He really and I'm I used them all up already. The white ones, but he really likes the white ones. So so we're out here today. We're just putting the finishing touches on. I put the trim on here, and it didn't. It didn't turn out real good up there at the top corner. Uh, my pieces didn't line up that well. Uh, it's kind of hard to, to stand on a ladder and measure all the way across there to get your numbers exactly right. But it turned out okay. I mean, it's good enough. It closes up the gap. I put some caulking in there a little bit to close up some of the holes. Try and keep uh, any, you know, the bugs are going to get in there, but uh, the birds going in there and making a nest is what you don't want. All right, so we got that all done. Windows are all installed. Um, so we're gonna paint the inside today and get this all finished up and ready. Opening day of hunting is uh, the 14th. It is, uh, I believe it's uh, 12th today. So so we're two days away from, from opening day. But I won't be hunting out here probably until, well, probably until later in October. Um, the, the pattern right now is showing me that the deer are coming up in the other corner there so we'll we'll see that could change in a week or two too you know you never know so let's go up there and uh, take a look at it so this is the view out the front window so if you watch my August uh, trail cam video that buck is coming out of that corner way up here okay and then he's just going across and he's going and he's heading all the way through the property and basically he's walking within 100 yards of our, our trailer over there, our home. And uh, and he's heading out to that big field. There's a big field behind behind our garage up there. There's a big field. And uh, he's heading out there at, you know, two o'clock in the morning. I do not have any, any pictures of him coming back. So I asked a few people and, and they, they've been seeing him on the road around five o'clock in the morning. So obviously he's making a loop. He's going and he's he's just up the road a little bit. Another hundred yards or two up the road is where they're seeing him. So he's crossing by the other neighbor up there and he's coming back to wherever he started from. Don't know how to how to approach him and, and get a shot at him, except that I'm thinking I'm gonna put a put a uh, tree stand up near the corner of that field which which comes right up to our property so I, right inside our property there i'm going to put a put a tree stand even though i'm only a couple hundred yards from the house i'm going to put a tree stand there and maybe in the morning you know at 5 30 when it gets light maybe i'll be able to still see him somewhere maybe he'll hang out a little longer in the field as we get closer to october so that's what i'm going to try so i won't be using this tree stand here probably until later on in the season so basically what we're going to do is we're going to paint paint this white up here and we're going to paint all these boards at least down to the window and uh, get that all painted black. So that's what we're going to do. So what I ended up doing is I went and bought a can of black Rust-Oleum. The Rust-Oleum paint was $14 for a can like this size. And the stain, the black stain that I used on the outside was the same price, $14 for a can this size. The difference being is that this paint is really thick. So I took this can of green, which was empty, and I took this and I, I dumped half the can of the black into this can and then I added paint thinner and thinned it way out. So now it's almost the same consistency of the stain. So basically I got two full cans like this for the same price as one can of the stain, if that makes any sense to you. So, so this basically came down to seven dollars a can now, instead of the fourteen dollars a can. And that's how I'm doing it. All, all I'm trying to do is to get this dark in here. And when it's thinned out like this, it soaks into this wood really nice, and and it'll be fine. So let's get painting.
It actually, uh, actually could probably be thinned out a little more. So if you haven't worked with the rough sawn wood, it is just what the name implies. It is rough. It is very rough. It's very hard on your your brush. Or I use these foam brushes and then just throw them away. But it's very, very hard on your brush using this painting on this wood. But it really soaks in. And then, and then after it dries, you just come back and if there's some big white spots, you just touch them up. You know, it's and it you really wouldn't have to even because this is this is really um, all you're trying to do is get it dark in here. So I'm going to continue painting here, um, and I'll show it to you when I'm when I'm finished. I don't want to get too much paint on my hand before I handle the camera. So when I'm all done here, I will I will come back and show you what this looks like when I'm done. Okay, guys. Well, it suddenly got dark in here. So I just went, I went down to the window, all the way around. The ceiling could probably use a little more. I thinned it out a little more so it didn't spread real good on that ceiling. But uh, I can just get a regular spray can and just come up and spray the, spray the ceiling. I got a few spots here to hit yet, but um, for the most part, that's, that's it. So now when the deer, and we'll go down and we'll look at this. When the deer are looking up in here, they should see black. They shouldn't see, they shouldn't see anything white anymore like we were before. So let's go take a look. So now if you remember before when we looked up at these windows, you could see white in there, the white or the light wood. Now all you see is dark. Well, I don't see nothing as I look in them windows now. It's just dark. So that's what you're looking for. You don't want to see that wood. You don't want to see the white. So I think that's a success. All right, so this stand is ready to go. Like I say, I'll get a spray bomb and maybe just touch up that ceiling a little bit up there. I mean, good hunting. So if you like these videos, you know, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. And enjoy your enjoy your hunt this year.